Okay, so finally we can start our class. Um, okay, yeah. just a second, I'll start sharing my screen. We're just 10 minutes late. It's okay, we'll catch up. All right, so my screen is visible, turn on. Yes. Yeah, okay. So as you can see on the screen, today's topic is about, uh, just a second. Okay, so today's topic is about data types, strings, and integers. So if you remember from last class, we did learn about some data types, right? We did learn about strings. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. So in this class, once more, we are going to go a bit more deep into strings and integers. These are not on the only data types. We have much more. But for now, we'll just go through these two main data types. Okay. So integers, I think we did discuss about integers last class, right? Right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, last class also, while discussing about variables, uh, we did discuss about integers. So uh, I hope you all remember about the variables. It was taught last class, last class, right? The variables. Yeah. Uh, Niharika, can you find out any one variable from this example? Mm -hmm. uh, this example here, you can see it, right? My network connection is so weak, so I can't see it properly. You can't see it properly. Mm. It's big text, right? Still you can't see? Mm. If you can't, it's okay. Um, Anush? Yeah. Uh, can you see any variables here? If you do, you can see it's alright if you know, don't know it. Any one variable? You don't get it? No. Okay, so anyone else who knows? Turtle. Can I? Yeah, so turtle is a variable here. So in this uh, example right here, you can see this example, right? Yeah. So in this example, we have three variables. That first one is rabbit. Uh, can you uh, see my cursor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first one is rabbit. Second variable is turtle, and the third variable is again a rabbit. Okay, so these are the three variables. How do you recognize a variable? You can see this equal to sign, right? So this equal to sign shows that uh, this is a variable. So this uh, rabbit is a variable here, or you can say it's a container. Imagine a bowl in place of this rabbit. And what you do is that you take this two there and you put it into the uh, rabbit, the uh, bowl named rabbit. So this is how variable works. So if you see an equal to sign, there's a variable. The integers are zero, positive or negative numbers, whole numbers without a fractional part. To form an integer object, you can use int open brackets and close brackets function. Okay, so uh, you all have learned about integers in your mathematics syllabus. So Yes. yes. So integers, you have zero positive numbers and negative numbers. Anything like two, four are positive numbers. Zero itself is a zero. And we have negative numbers that goes below zero. So all these are integers. So uh, you can't have fractions like one by two or anything like that. It's only like uh, basic integers. So uh, to form an integer object, you can use the int open bracket and close bracket. I also demonstrated this in the last class. Do you remember? Yeah. Did I show it in last class? Yes, brother. 
okay. So since it's shown in last class, you can see an example also here, small example. Age is equal to 30. A simple example or demonstration of how you use integers. Integers versus string. So uh, last class I also taught about string. I mean a basics about strings, right? So uh, last class somebody asked, I think Chirant, you asked uh, whether it was immutable or mutable, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was it actually was, uh, mutable. Uh, it was actually immutable. Sorry for that. Uh, it's actually immutable. All right. Okay. Strings are immutable. So I'll explain why strings are immutable uh, a bit later. So now we will see the difference between integers and strings. So this str is string. You use it as a short form as str. So that's a string. So first one, we have a uh, comparison. This is a string. This is about the string. String like hello is made up of characters h, e, l, l, and o. So uh, I told, uh, I explained in last class about what strings are, right? So strings are like, uh, it is characters. You can use any kind of characters in that. It includes uh, numbers, letters, and all the symbols also. So here, when you use a string that is called hello, the string is storing each character like h e l l o it's so storing separately so that's a string so that's how a string works now an integer is not made up of smaller parts you can access individual it's a single unit so now as i said uh, this hello is now being stored as single separate separate parts so like a h you have e you have l l and o these are separate you can access it separate also. Like last time I told uh, I told how you can print it, right? So you can print even single letters of that. I'll explain that also later on this class. But integers are not like that. Integers, if you put 40, it is not 40. It is totally 40. So last class, uh, we did we tried some examples and uh, someone had a problem like like uh, if you add 4 and 4, four plus 4, it's coming 44, right? Someone had that problem, right? That's me. Ah, uh, yeah, Chiran. So, uh, so that is because string stores it as separate uh, characters. So if I say 44 plus 22, now if I store x is equal to 42, I'll just uh, show it, which is it. You can see this uh, collapse screen. Mm -hmm. Is the collapse screen visible? Okay, yes. Okay. So now if I type. Samarth. Can you hear me, Samarth? Yes, brother. Where is the last class? Brother? Last, where is their last class? I didn't understand, brother. So, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, was the question clear? I mean, I asked uh, where you present in the last yes, class. Brother, I think I didn't uh, attend the last class. Oh, you didn't attend. Yeah, it's okay. Yes. Tell us, we were you there? Yes, brother. Yeah, so you can see this 20 right here. Yes, brother. So right now, not uh, just like you see, in this code, is it uh, in integer form or in uh, string form? You can try to answer. String. Uh, okay, Chirant, um, you did answer. So we'll also hear the answer from Tejasvi also. 
Tejasvi, can you speak a bit louder? You are not audible last time. Um, did anyone hear you? Or Tejasvi, you can uh, send it in the chat. Brother, it is integer. Integer. Okay. So Tejasvi says it is integer and Chiran says it is string, right? Niharika, uh, which yes. who do you think is correct? I don't know the correct answer, but I think it's an integer. Integer. So you say Tejasvi is correct? Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. So actually, 20 here in this code, in this line of code, it is an integer. Tejas was right and Niharika also was right. And Cherith, it's, uh, it's okay. I'll explain why it's not a uh, string. I mean, you did try. I mean, last time I mentioned uh, you had some uh, the same problem, right? Similar to this? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll say why. Because uh, if you remember how I uh, mentioned you use a string, you, if you remember, we use uh, double quotes. So if you see from this example, you see that uh, there are double quotes in the front and the back of the V-jump. Can you see that? Yeah. So when you use double quotes or single quotes, when you use double quotes or single quotes, that becomes a string. So now if I enclose it in double quotes, this becomes a string. So now this two and zero are both separate characters. So now if I give two numbers, X and Y, and any number uh, here, then I type int so now as you can see it is coming 2020 right uh, you can see the output right uh, down here yes yes so the reason why we didn't get 40 is because I used double quotes so if I use double quotes, it's going to turn into a string. So now it's not, it's no longer the number 20. It is being like 20 separate and zero separate. So these two are characters, two, zero. And in Y also we have two, zero. So they just add two, zero, two, zero. Uh, you might, and yeah, I hope you got it. So, yes. yeah. So uh, if you see in this, you can see that hello is stored in as H-E-L-L-O, right? So in the same way, this 20 is being stored as two and zero. So now I don't want it as string. I want it to do addition as in mathematics. So what I do is that I don't use a single or double quotes. I just type it there or I can also use, uh, if you see uh, in the slide, you have seen that uh, we can use the string or I mean the integer using the int, right? The int function. So similarly, you can also do that. You can type int yeah, also. This would also work or just typing plainly 20 also would work. You got it? So if you type plainly 20 without any double quotes or single quotes, it's going to uh, think the computer will think that it's an integer and store it like that. This is used when you go into a bit more complex parts of the code. So for now, you can just use this simple uh, 20. If you're using number, you don't have to use the double quotes. So now uh, I just remove this in here as it's not necessary. So now I'll get the required answer that is 40. As you can see, uh, when it's stored as an integer, it takes as a number. Uh, so when you add the number, 
so then it can uh, show the actual mathematical calculation or else it will just add the strings like one by one there was two zero in the first one and two zero in the second one so it will just type two zero two zero if it is a string okay so uh, i hope you understood about that concept right the difference between string how string stores the data and integer stores the data so second one is you can access each character by its position or index so uh, index uh, some of you might have heard it some of you might be hearing it for the first time but it's okay it is a really fun uh, function that you have you can learn it will be useful in future when you use no in future i mean when you learn future coding like uh, when you are using loops or something like that but for now we'll just go with the pretty much basic way of using index so in uh, in integers you can't use indexing so before that i'll just explain what is indexing okay so uh, now if i type hello number hello you can see this right You can see the code. Yes. Uh, yes, brother. Just zoom on it a bit. Okay. So now we can see I had typed x is equal to hello. Is this correct? Can anyone say? I am. Is this correct, I am? Yes, but it is correct. This is correct. So if I print it, it's going to come. What will it come? Now I just print X. So what do you think will come? Hello. Oh, like this it will come. Hello. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, no, but it's showing error. What happened? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Lassia, go on. Lassia, you are saying something, right? Oh, it's okay. Ian, can you uh, find where was the mistake in my code? Yes, but I am looking. My screen is stuck. I cannot move it. So. Okay. Excuse me, brother. Uh, yes. I think we have to put inverted commas. Yes, very good, Nutana. So, Ayan, as Nutana said, uh, when this hello, Ayan, uh, do you think it's an integer or do you think it's a string? It's a string, brother. Yeah, so if using a string, you must enclose it with double quotes, okay? Double quotes or single quotes, that's of your choice. So if you don't use double quotes or single quotes, the computer is going to think you're trying to input an integer or some other kind of data types. So we don't want that. So since hello is made up of uh, characters that are rather than numbers, we will enclose it with Double quotes and we got the exact answer. Nothana, you are right. Very good. So now, uh, as you can see, I used a, a string here. You use double quotes. Okay. So now, what do you mean by indexing? So I'll explain this. So um, I told you that each of these letters are stored as separate characters, right? So here, first one is H. First one is H, then it is E, then it is L, L, O, O, and it goes on. So each of them are separate, separately stored. So now, um, last year, yes. which is the fourth letter here in this text, which is the fourth letter? Yes. Yeah. 
And is it the fourth letter? Okay, we'll count together. One, two, oops, sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay, so L is the fourth letter. So now, as I told you, now I told, uh, last year you were right, okay. So now I told uh, to say the fourth letter and last year said four. Similarly, now I only want to print this uh, fourth letter. So I want to say the computer only to say, print the fourth letter. So that is called, that thing or that way of doing it is called indexing. So you are indexing each number. This is the first number. This is the second number. L is the third number. Uh, and O is the sixth number or fifth number. Or uh, giving each numbers for each uh, characters, it is called indexing. Okay. So in indexing, uh, you have a bit different topic. So now you started counting from H, right? H is one, E is two, L is three, O is four. You counted like that, uh, like that, right, uh, Lasia? Yes. Yeah. Just the first. So, but Python, it didn't learn that way. So in Python, how it is saying is that H is zero, E is one, L is two. Three. You get it? So now, how do I print? Now, I told, uh, I asked Lasia, which is the fourth number. She said it is L. Now, how do I tell the computer to print the fourth number? I'll explain it. So now I have print X here, right? Yes. You can see. So now, what X contains is that it contains all these strings. I mean, all these characters, H separate, E separate, L separate. So it has stored all those values. So now I'll introduce a new kind of bracket, this one. You can see the pink brackets, right? Yes. Does anyone know what it is called? Square bracket. Yes, very good, Niharika. It's called square brackets. So now I'm going to use a square bracket and I say the fourth letter. So now this is important. Uh, you see the variable here, right? X, I given the variable. So next to that itself, I should type uh, all these uh, the square brackets. And in that I should type which number, I mean like which character I need. So now, as you can see, I'm getting O, but Lasia said it was L. So what do you think, Lasia? I already explained, right? So can you explain it to your friends why it is coming O instead of L? Uh, Lasia. Yes. Uh, you said both letter was L, right? Yeah. But here in the output, it's showing O. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I already uh, explained just a second ago. If you can say, do you know? I think you want to count the character of uh, double quotes. Double quotes. Uh, all right. So that's your answer, right? So about uh, Leah. I mean, uh, Leah? Is Leah here? Hello? Yes. Uh, Brother? So, uh, this is the first class? Yeah, I am joining today because I had network issues and exams. So, I have joined today the first class. Uh, it's okay. I hope you can catch up. Okay, last year? Yes, brother. You wanted to say something? Yes, brother. Can I say the, uh, I think H we want to count first from zero. From zero. Okay. Yeah. What about Nutana? Yes, brother. I want to say the same thing. 
same thing okay we will see so uh, nutana and lasya you both were right congratulations okay so uh, exactly as you said we will start the h from zero so uh, we here while counting we might start the h from like 1 e is 2 and this 3 but the computer doesn't do it that way it says h is 0 e is 1 and this 2 uh this and this 3 and o is 4 so now i said the fourth character and it has printed o so so that's why it has printed o so um anush yeah i want to print e so what will i which number should i use for indexing uh oh uh, wait E one. One. Okay, we'll see. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. Very good, Anush. You are right. We E we used one. So this year the. Sorry. Uh, from this uh, we can see that. All these uh, letters are separate, stored separate. So I can also access it separately. You saw it. How I accessed it. So in that way, we can access it separately. So it separately, like each of these has an order, right? The first, uh, the one to the left is H is one. I mean zero. E is one. L is two. So it has an order. So that is called indexing. It's a pretty simple topic. Once you do a lot of codes, you'll get much more familiar with it it will become easy so i think this uh, indexing was clear for everyone right a thumbs up if it is clear <coughs> all right so i think it was clear for most of the people so we'll go to the next one okay so as given here uh, the here is an example so i don't have to uh, explain it much as i already showed how it is done so in string i mean sorry in integers i didn't explain that right in integers uh, i type some random numbers all right so uh, niharika is it possible to print only this three i think no no so is there any reason along with that just i guess uh, can you explain Can go on, like you can say what might be the reason. If no, it's okay. You can tell it. Okay. And Niharika, do you have a reason? No. Okay. No. So we'll see. So can anyone else say is it possible? Because uh, if it is a integer, and Python doesn't take uh, numbers as differently, it will uh, take as a single uh, single um, uh, single uh, word and. It Take it as one nine three six, not one plus nine plus three plus six. Exactly. So you are uh, right on every words, Chirant. Very good. Uh, I'm glad that you did understand pretty well. Okay. So just as Chirant said, uh, here as you can see, I didn't use any inverted comma. So which means it is stored as a string. So this computer is thinking it as a string. Uh, I'm sorry again. As an integer, get it right? 
So since I didn't use double quotes, it's stored as an integer. Here, if I use double quotes, it's a string, or else it's a number or an integer. So uh, as Kiran said, integers are not stored as separate characters like you did in string. So it is as a whole, it stores a whole number. It's not 1936, it is 1936. Yeah. It is storing like that. So this can be only done in using calculations. So even if I do it, I will get an error. This shows that uh, indexing doesn't work on integers. It only works in strings. So that's what we had here. So this just this is just an example here. I already showed uh, how you, you use indexing here. They printed each of the letter of this hello separately, one by one. As you can see, uh, in the first print, it's going to print H. The second print, it's going to print E, L, and so on. So that is how it works with strings. We can use indexing. But when it comes to numbers, you can't do indexing because it stores other whole, whole number as a number itself. It won't store separate characters. So since it is like that, we can only do mathematical calculations for such integers. So here in this example, they just uh, gave a simple uh, example for a mathematical, two mathematical operations that are addition and multiplication. So you might say that multiplication has a pretty odd symbol, right? It is using small star. So we'll learn about how we can do these mathematical operations in the other future classes. But for now, we'll go with the simple addition and this one is multiplication. You can just keep it in your knowings. Okay. So next again, we'll go to, we'll learn a bit more about string. A string is a sequence of characters enclosed within either single quotes or double quotes. It is an immutable data type. As I so, uh, said last class, I mentioned it as a mutable data type. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it is actually an immutable data type. So uh, why you say, I mean, like in this variable, once it is stored, you can't like uh, change it again. All right. So now we can see uh, we have two features of string. First one is sequence and second one is index. So these two points are both interdependent. So if you want to index something, you need a sequence. Uh, if you didn't understand, I'll just show you. I mean, uh, it's already shown in the last uh, example, right? So I typed hello. And uh, each of these, as I said, it's in an order. Sequence, you can say it as an order. So it starts from H0, ES1, and so on. So each is an, in an ordered way. It is not here and there. It is stored in a sequence or an ordered way. Uh, when you print, it doesn't print L first and O uh, second or something like that. It prints it, it uh, in an order. Integer also does the same thing but it stores all together. It is not separate. So uh, that, uh, that's what I was coming to say. Here, you can, since there's a sequence, you can use indexing. So since L is always the third, I mean the second integer, uh, second character, I can use indexing. I can use two here and L will be printed. So uh, that is the two features of using a string. You can say an example, bowl uh, underscore, underscore one is equal to noodles. So uh, is string clear for everyone? Yes. Yes. Brother, you are muted. Oh, thank you, Charan. Sorry for that. Yeah. So we have length here. So we use short forms because, um, you know, it might be easier to type. So a l e n stands for length. So this, you can see this two brackets, right? 
parenthesis yes exactly these are called parenthesis parenthesis you did see in the last example also do you remember where we saw it in the print command ah uh, yes exactly we do yeah we do use uh, parenthesis in print command also but uh, in this format open bracket and close bracket next to each other did we see it somewhere you do remember it data types yeah which data type um, integers yes exactly so good job ayan and cherant also you um, uh, you guessed it so uh, we saw in the last slide i'll just go back to the last slide yes you can see here right int integer and open bracket and a close bracket so when you use this this is called a function uh, we'll have a detailed class about functions later on but for now this uh, you can just learn it this as a function so this len is a function so used to determine the length or the number of items in a collection can be used with int list tuple or any other iterable object so we have a small example here so uh, so just as the name suggests it is to know the length but uh, it is not like uh, a separate like uh, it doesn't string it is not like indexing so now as you can see uh, this here this here is a list do you know what are list pretty basic word right use it usually can i can say what might be list okay so it's okay so list you have multiple objects or names in that <laughs> so now uh again in list also we we'll learn more about it in the future classes but for now we will just have an idea so as you can see you have multiple names here right so uh, this is an inverted comma this is an inverted comma so this mom m o m is a string so next string is dad d a d it is enclosed within uh, inverted comma two inverted commas so you can see this comma in the middle right Yeah, of mom and dad. Yes, sir. Yeah, this comma is eight uh, different strings. So here, mom string is stored separate, dad string is stored separate, daughter string is stored uh, stored separately. So it is uh, to divide each strings. So uh, this whole this is the first string that is stored in value, and this this is dad is the second string stored in, stored in value. so in the same way now if i use the len function uh, uh if i use the len function here what do you think i'll get uh, i'll just show you okay so this here is a string right 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 yes yes okay so uh, we have multiple strings here you can see it is separated with this comma so i'll just finish it as uh, a bit more quickly so what do you think might come here anyone with me okay. uh no i didn't use the print print object this is a length so it will di display a number like how many strings are there so Three. Three. 
Oh, was it three? Or, uh, I couldn't hear it. Yes, uh, three. So Ayan says it's three. Any other answers? Okay, since we have no answers, we'll see. Oops. I didn't use the variable. Okay. Mm. There is some kind of error here. Um, just check it out. Okay, pretty weird. Uh, there's some error here. Okay. My bad. I'll just take it out in the next class and I will uh, explain it once again. For now, uh, this is the way you use it. It is here. You will uh, get displayed four. Okay. So the first string is mom, second string is dad, uh, third thing is third string daughter, fourth string son. So we have four strings like that. So it's going to print four. I'll check out the code later and I'll give it in the next class. My bad for that. Okay. So we'll continue on. Uh, the third feature of string, it is immutable. So once a string is created, it cannot be changed or modified. Correct the spelling. So um, now as you can see, uh, strings are immutable. So once this is stored as rhythm, it, uh, it is a bit hard to change it unless you manually go to the code and uh, change it. So uh, we have an example. So now here, uh, as you can see, we are just adding the J here. So each characters are separate. We'll just add it in the middle. Like first you will print this much part of the word, first and second one of the uh, letter, I mean the string. Then we'll print uh, J as a capital. Then we'll use the continuing letter, so UMP. So we are not uh, referring J here. So you have to go through all these just to uh, change a string. So that is why it is called as immutable. Okay. So uh, we were, we are very short on time, but still we'll try. We'll try to finish at least one question here. So uh, okay. this is a question for you. So you can uh, everyone have your collab, right? Yes. Uh, is it open? Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So since you are ready, yeah. everyone. Is there anyone who's still open? Uh, okay, I'll take that now. So, okay. So, now, uh, first question is that write a program for an elevator that welcomes the person. Ask for you to know which floor uh, the person wants to go. And finally, displace the floor the person chose. This is. This is not that complicated. It's pretty easy. But uh, you can all give it a try in your collab. What exactly I'll explain it. What you what I want the code to do, sir. First, it greets the user. Imagine that you're in a lift. It first greets the user. It says hello, anyone or hello. Just hello is enough. Then it is going to ask a question. So if you remember how you ask the user is you use input. So by using input, you ask the user about which floor you want to go. And remember, floors are represented in numbers. So you know what data type to use, right? So uh, you uh, get the which floor they want and then print that floor below. All right. Uh, the question is understood, right? Yes. All right. Uh, so you can uh, go to your collab. We have, oh my God, we have only two minutes. So try to finish it. We'll see.
once done you can send it in the chat room or personally to me in whatsapp right okay we can start doing uh, leah you want to go uh, it's okay we we'll see you in the next class Rather, we should do it now. Yes, you can just go to your collab and just do it. It's a small call, right? You can finish it as quickly as possible. Okay. Chirant has done it. Very good. Chirant is the first one to do it. Very good, Sharant. Your code is working. Uh, uh, you uh, didn't add the the greeting part, but it's okay. Um, yes, it does show. It does ask me the floor number, and it also prints the floor number. Pretty good. You have done a good job. Has anyone else completed it? Okay, we'll wait until uh seven thirty four. Two more minutes and. Okay, so I think the time is up. Uh, if you are done with the code, you can send it to me right now. Uh, you are still doing the code, right? Uh, if you still didn't finish, uh, 
okay so you still didn't finish i think uh, you can share it to me later in in uh, whatsapp all right okay or can we'll do we'll this in the next, next class uh we started like 15 minutes late so just a bit of time shortage we will see we will manage it in the next class uh so this was the answer here so you can see you first start by greeting welcome to the elevator then you use an variable then you use the integer a data type then the input then you type which floor you are like to go in this is just to give the user the hint like there's only five floors so you can choose any number from five from one to five so then uh, you print what floor you have cho uh, they have chosen so this is a pretty uh, an easy one so it's okay we'll continue with the next uh, few questions we do have few more questions but we'll finish it off with assignment Brother, shall I send it to you personally after completing? Uh, this question. I mean, this question, right? The I mean, this one. What? Uh, you mentioned about this question or the assignment? About the assignment. The assignment. This you question, can... question. 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 Okay, yeah. if you do have time right now, you can also send the question because you have to send the assignment also. So if you do have time, you can go, uh, you can also uh, type the can question and send the assignment once again. I'll just show it to you. I will also send it in the group. Okay. okay, so assignment, create a program that performs basic arithmetic operations on two numbers, right? So you know about the basic uh, arithmetic operations, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, yes. all those basic ones. So you take the input from the user. Uh, okay. You can use X or Y. Then you take the input. Then you do the calculations one by one. That's your assignment. If you have any confusions, uh, since we're short of time, you can ask me in WhatsApp or uh, yeah, in WhatsApp, you can ask to me or to Maria. In the group? In the group. Uh, question once. Assignment. Assignment, yeah. Sure, I'll send it in the group. Okay. Uh, so, later you can do this when you have time. You have time till next Wednesday, so. Well, assignment we have to send in the group, huh? Group, uh, it's better like if you send it to me personally or to Maria sister personally. If okay. you don't have my number or some problems like that, you can send it in the group. But okay. Okay. personally, okay? Okay. Yeah. So this is the assignment. I'll send it, also send it in the group. You don't have to worry. So you have time till Wednesday, you can complete it. So thank you for today's class. Thank you for cooperating with me today. Hope you all have a good day. I mean, it's already evening, but yeah. Thank you, everyone. Now you can leave the class. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you.